Number 11, James K. Polk, Democrat, 1845 to 1849, 49 years old, from Tennessee. The best way to understand Polk is to understand Jackson. Polk saw himself as someone who was going to fulfill uh, this Jacksonian doctrine. What would Jackson do? This is the, the mantra that Polk seems to repeat almost every day he's in office. The Polk administration, in effect, bookends the age of Jackson. He came into office with ample Jacksonian credentials and then achieved a whole series of Jacksonian measures once he got in office. In many ways, he's perhaps more of a Jacksonian than Jackson is. He believes very, very strongly in this idea of a level playing field for the American people. I said that Jackson and Pope were went at the hip and the head, and I think they were. I don't think if you and I sat down to dinner with the president of our choice, James K. Pope would come in the top 25. I think he was a great president, but that doesn't mean that he was a likable man. He also was quite a devious man. In contrast to his personality, Polk was probably the most accessible president in U.S. history. The White House, for all intents and purposes, in the 1840s is a community center for the rather small village of Washington. The Marine Corps Band plays on the White House lawn every Wednesday. Uh, and this is open to the public. Polk also makes himself available twice a week to American citizens. And all that was required was to knock on the White House door and to give your card to the steward and to wait your turn. Polk really does see himself as the first servant of the people. Polk is often called the hardest working president in U.S. history. He was known for his long work days and had gas lights installed in the White House so he could work through the night. Polk was a hands-on micromanager as president. For example, he was the first president to really get uh, deeply into the budget. He was the first president to tell all the heads of all the departments, look, don't send your budget request straight to Congress. Send them to me. More than anything, James K. Polk wanted to fulfill the ideological promise of Andrew Jackson's presidency, what was then being called America's Manifest Destiny. He embodies it, this idea that the United States has a providential destiny to expand westward is something that he accepts implicitly. To Polk, Manifest Destiny was more than an idea. It was his presidential mandate. Polk had four goals, which he was dedicated to achieving in his four years as president. He said he would only serve one term. And he wanted to settle the controversy between the United States and Great Britain over the Oregon Territory. He wanted to bring California into the United States. He wanted to set up an independent treasury to fix the credit mess that uh, had prevailed since Jackson. And he wanted to lower tariffs on imports into the American economy. To achieve his economic goals, Polk pressured Congress to lower the federal tariff and to establish an independent treasury. He succeeded. To achieve his territorial goals, he used force. First, he threatened war with Great Britain to gain the Oregon Territory. The crowd was raised, 5440 or fight, 54 parallel, 5440 or fight. And to his credit, he did not draw the line in the center on that, end up in the 49th parallel. Then he actually went to war with Mexico to settle the Texas border and acquire the Southwest and California. The Mexican War, fought between 1846 and 1848, came to dominate Polk's administration. And that, along with the acquisition of the Oregon Territory, became the legacy of his presidency. People don't remember, I'm sorry to say, uh, that Polk's greatness as a president has to do directly with the fact that in four years, he did take the country from just west of the Mississippi all the way to the Pacific Ocean. From sea to shining sea, a ringing phrase, Pope gave it to us. He made us 
a continental nation.